My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence on Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the cast of Somewhere in Montana. The film follows John Alexander, who is a man whose roots run strong and deep in Montana. His presence on the land is as much a part of Montana as the mountains themselves against the wide open sky. But for the first time in his life, John is realizing that not everything is set in stone as he previously believed. Facing the potential loss of his land and his livelihood, John realizes that he's going to have to make a deal that may as well be as kin to selling his soul to the devil. So to talk about the film, first up is Michelle Hurd, who plays Kat. Well, I want to start off, you know, obviously this film, it's so beautiful. Um, It's called Mm -hmm. Somewhere in Montana for anyone listening or watching. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, kind of how you got involved in the project, because it's a very indie film, but it's so beautiful. And there's so many elements that it covers. So I was like, how did they get Michelle? How did they get her? Because she's such a legend. I like legend. It makes me feel less than like, not so just old. Well, I, you know, really it's the casting director, Ricky. She had just cast me in um, another indie film called Plus One with uh, Cedric, the entertainer, which I played his wife, which was super fun. You can imagine. Improving with that man is ridiculous. And and Jonathan Stoddard was also in that film. And I, I heard last night, we all came in yesterday for the premiere. Um, and we had a little dinner a gathering and um, Brandon was telling me that uh, she brought my name up and said, what about, you know, Michelle Hurd? And Brandon was like, yeah, right. Like she's going to be interested in this. And, and I wish people wouldn't think that because I'm interested in all kinds of art, you know, just, you know, reach out. I'll, I'm I'm sitting around waiting to make good, you know, good uh, art with creative people. And they sent the script over and I'm not going to tell you because usually I, when I'm, someone asks me this, I tell them about this certain section in the script that really hit me, but I'm not going to say it because I want you guys to come see it. But there was, you know, I read the script and I, I read this, uh, scene and it was so beautiful it was just so beautiful and it really touched me and I think anybody who has loved and lost love and are working through how to move on can really relate to it and uh, you know that's all it takes for me to, to take a job is if there's a real truth a heart message I'm in and so I read that and I was like yep Sign me up. And then I have well, to I, say, coming out here to Pulse in Montana, I couldn't have even thought that it would change my life as it has. I'm sure can, uh, you know, agree that it's just, uh, it's a beautiful place. It's a soothing place. This Flathead Lake is so beautiful. And, and it really, you just really see, you know, the incredible planet that we live on, you know, this beautiful place that we live on that is just, you know, has so much beauty to offer us. If we just respect it and love it, you know, it gives back to us. So that's been a real, I think for the entire cast we all and that's why the entire cast basically has come back to Pulse in Montana for this premiere because it was this place this community that welcomed us so much the cast became family I'm so grateful that Ricky reached out and I'm so so grateful that I said yes I think people probably don't are like shocked when they get you because I told you you're a legend that's why but we'll let the word out now she will do it if it's good <laughs> send it thank to you her. Monica say that again. whenever you want say that as much as possible <laughs> um no but seriously it's true so that's probably why like I would never think if I wrote a movie I would get you because you're so like literally a legendary status so I wanted to ask you so what's so great is I read the description online so, so you play Kat and mm-hmm. she's coming on to a farm with farmers and ranchers that are not necessarily happy about the fact that she is head like spearheading a film that they're going to be recording yeah. on the land and by yeah. doing that it can hurt the land or ruin land and like you know and various other things um it's yeah. kind of like a ripple effect so for you what was that like i mean like <clears throat> you said it's gorgeous the shots that they show are beautiful the location that was picked with the house like there's a house and it's kind of literally in the middle of nowhere i mean it was beautiful but when you read initially for cat and you hear you know her goals which which is to make this film yeah. on this land. Were you nervous about it? Were you excited about it? Do you work on trying to understand why she wants to do it? Um, like, you know, how do you like work that out kind of in your brain because it is such beautiful land and because the owner isn't that thrilled that you're coming yeah. on, um, who is played by Graham McTavish. It's not that thrilled that people are coming onto his land initially. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Um, you know, it's really interesting because um, uh, as an actor, you know, you just look for truths, right? You want to ground your performance in truth. And, you know, as we've spoken, I've been in this industry for decades and so I've, I've experienced so many producers on sets and producers who helm who hold their director's hands who are there 24 7 who are putting out fires left and right so it was really kind of it was very easy for me to sort of step 
into that world of what she's doing because you know she, from her point of view she has this project she's got to get make sure the funding you know um, stays tight which means she's got to keep to schedule and she has to get it done um so that's what she's thinking you know this is her you know thought like okay now I'm just going to go to this place I'm going to talk to this man we're going to sign this thing we're going to start shooting everything's fine she's not even computing really I, I mean she you know she knows that this is Hollywood quote unquote, coming to Montana. And it may not be, um, you know, a red carpet welcome, but she, her, in her head, she's just ticking off boxes. You know, she's like, right. So we have to do this, 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 and go on. I, I feel like I've experienced that on almost every set. There's producers who are forever, you know, running around with their heads on fire, you know, trying to look calm. And I, and I have to say one thing that was kind of lovely here was Eden, who, um, you know, who's one of our producers, phenomenal producer. I really loved meeting her and interacting with her. And because she's from here, I just wanted to, I sort of used her as a bit of an inspiration as a producer on this type of film, you know? And so I really, you know, she was, I sort of was watching her and I was like, yeah, yeah. Cause I didn't want it to be like, you know, you have to place where you're supposed to be in the script and make that the reality. So I really wanted to give myself as many truths as I could to really ground the character. Cause then once you do that, you can fly. You have so much real estate that you can really play in once you get your 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 roots down, so to speak. So honestly, it was a very um, smooth sort of transition you know, we're all probably saying this, but the actors, everybody really embodied what was asked of the script. It was such a smooth fit to like my first scenes when I meet the ranch owner um, played by Graham McTavish, who's phenomenal. You know, this is a Scottish man and he's here, you know, embodying a Montana ranch man. And I swear he really just, you know, mm, sat in it. And so our first scenes and he knew what exactly he wanted to do and knew that this was his ranch and he didn't want it to be sort of corrupted by this Hollywood presence. So so the scenes and the energy is um, it's just right there. You know, you don't have to force anything, which is the best. You want what comes from the page, comes through the body, comes through the, you know, interaction with your scene partner to just kind of flow so that you don't have to, you know, force it. So it really made, and, and that's a testament to the writing as well. So really, it was just a smooth fit. I didn't have to go really far to try to figure out how to to bring her to life, she really sort of stepped up in, in me and, and let herself be known. And I quite like Kat because she's, you know, if you get, if you know what I, I, I like being bosses in charge and kind of, you know, strong women as we are. So, you know, this, uh, it, it felt, it felt yummy to play her. And do you struggle too? Cause obviously I've seen, I've seen the film, so I'm trying really hard not to give anything away, but for you, I found it very interesting because I really enjoy watching Kat kind of come in. And like you said, it's almost like a checklist, right? It's her job. She's done this. It's like every day, every day you could tell she's done movies before. This is nothing new to her. Is there a fine line when you're doing a part like that, where you don't want to come off like someone that doesn't care? like a producer that doesn't care at all and is just right. like there to do a job and leave because you do such a great job of that balance. Like, I don't feel like she comes on and she's aggressive. I don't feel like she comes on and she's saying, I don't care about your feelings. I think right. she comes on and has an idea of what she thinks it's going to be, but is yeah. open-minded to what happens when she arrives. So how yeah. do you balance that out to make yeah. her not someone that you're like, oh, I just I just don't like this character. Why is she doing this? You know, and I think it, it still, it comes back to uh, understanding. Well, I think... Cat, you know, it's gonna, this is sort of an interesting sort of, uh, I, I've never, I didn't really think about how to articulate this kind of uh, response. So it's just gonna flow out here. I think because she is a producer who has been doing this for quite a long time, she knows how to navigate through the, the tricky waters, right? Meaning she's been on sets with high maintenance actors, with high maintenance directors, with high maintenance everything, right? So she's learned how, and she's a woman in this industry. She's known that she has to, have a strong voice, but you can't annoyingly, because of this is what the you know world says, we can't have a shrill voice, right? Because then we're hysterical, supposedly, please. So I think she she's really learned how to balance egos and emotions of others and that kind of thing. And I have to say, for me, for Michelle, walking onto many sets where there's big egos and, you know, all that same stuff in real life, I too <laughs> have learned how to navigate that so that I'm, I'm, I'm okay, you know, so that I don't end up getting blows back, right? So I think I just tapped into that kind of thing of like, how would she deal with these 
very extreme differences between my character's director and I mean the film's director and the you know ranch owner and the different actors and how do you make everybody feel pretty my sister and I always joke that when you know we interact with people and they're losing their shit or you know whatever you're like okay you're pretty everybody's 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 pretty we're all pretty and it's everybody's birthday okay okay it's that kind of thing of like making sure that everybody has a platform and feels heard but I do think that Kat has, I think in this film, she even goes into a journey where she understands more about herself in it as well. She's touched by something that happens in it. And I think she's changed. Even some of the earlier things you could see she's navigating, she's navigating, she's doing her, you know, she's, you know, checking her boxes, but then she too is impacted by some things that happen on the set. I think everybody is profoundly changed in this project because of these, this event that happens. I think she will, if, if I was to think of like, what was, what would Kat do moving on? I think she would have an even broader and a more deeper understanding of people and struggles moving on to the next uh, project because of what happened in this. I wanted her to be, you know, alive enough to grow and change and be impacted by her circumstances, but not be overwhelmed with her circumstances. So that way you really have to navigate each interaction. It's pretty fun. You know, unfortunately you're right. As women with different backgrounds, diversity, whatever the case is, sexual orientation, you say anything and we're a bitch I mean like there's no other way to say it like you're Probably just like, a bitch or difficult to work with or whatever the case is so it's just so frustrating so that's why when I saw you you know in this film and the way that you handle it it was so delicate but authoritative and that's such a hard thing to do and so to hear you know kind of it makes sense that for the years again legend I'll, I'll keep using it because <laughs> it's true so the years that you've done all this legendary work you've gotten unfortunately kind of used to having to do that having to balance these men and you know whoever else is in the industry like you know like I have an idea but okay I'm gonna offer it this way so it doesn't come off in a certain way so you've taken that and that you kind of poured into Cat a little bit which yeah exactly so well in that film because yeah. it, it just makes so much sense yeah it's it's like learning how to sort of put the breadcrumbs down so that somebody else thinks that it's their idea you're like oh that's yeah. such a great idea you know yeah <laughs> I know I, I feel like women were really good at that <laughs> we're really good at it one of our superpowers one of our superpowers Idea. Well, I like I said, I love her so much. What was it like for you when you stepped out and kind of because Montana is beautiful and I think we all have pictures of what it might look like. This film in the very beginning, and again, I don't think it's any shocker, they do like kind of like a wide shot or like a pull up shot, and you see this huge set like mountains and land and this one gorgeous house that's like kind of sitting like a like a farmhouse sitting there. What was that like when you pulled up and you were like, Oh my gosh, this is where we're shooting? Um, so what was your kind of take? on that and working obviously in Montana it's just mm -hmm. such a beautiful state and we've seen mm -hmm. shows you know like show Montana or you know do a fake Montana but I don't know there was something special about this film and that the way that it was shot and the scenes and I just love that scene in particular when the movie first starts that first 30 seconds and there's no people there's no nothing it's just the house and the land and the mountains so uh. just, like get out of that truck like you know when they pick you up or whatever you drive there you get out and you're like oh my gosh like so what is that like when you step out you know my Honestly, every single day we drove to set, it was that beautiful, amazing discovery experience. I swear, obviously the first day, because you know, we're we're all staying at some sort of hotel or whatever, and yet we get picked up and we drive a bit, drive, a drive, drive, and you kind of go through these winding things, and then you come over this, you know, like hill, and you're gifted with this amazing view, this vista, this, you know, beautiful plains. It almost is like a, a make-believe farmhouse because it's so perfect. It's quintessent. It's what you imagine. It's literally the porch, the picket fence, the, the whole thing. In the mountains, on, in the behind and the side. And I mean, we, every single time we would all be like chatting in the car, like mink, 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 whatever. And as soon as we come over that bend, we just all go, ah, oh, look at this. I'm sure that like, not just the first day, probably almost to the last day, every time we got onto the set, we would stop and we'd, you know, say, oh, look at this over there. Oh my gosh, look over there. Oh my goodness. We're taking pictures. We would just comment on how beautiful it is. And there's just something, you know, I, I've said this to, you know, my family, I love water and I love islands, you know, I'm, I'm half Jamaican. So I love going down to, you know, the Caribbean and it's always been my thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Caribbean, the ocean and, you know, that water. But I have been so changed. I still love an island, but I've been so um, changed. And, I'm, and I love what has been given to me because sitting by a lake and seeing the mountains, you know, behind them, it's magical. It's kind of magical. You know, you really appreciate the beauty and the expanse and the breadth 
of air here, you know? I'm a New Yorker. I'm, I'm born and raised in, in New York, Greenwich Village, New York. I'm used to like every different kind of sound constantly happening. And to be out in um, this beautiful ranch where you're just hearing nature and you're, you know, the air is so clean and the, you understand, you know, it's hard to even put into words how truly glorious this place is. And, you know, I never heard, I'm sorry, I apologize. I had never heard of Pulse in Montana, but trust me, I really am not good at geography anyway. So I don't know a lot of the states, but finding this place. And, and I have to say it, I know I said it before, but the community here, you know, they welcomed us. They opened up their arms to us. I felt so, I felt like family almost immediately. You know, I didn't feel any kind of weird thing and not being welcomed or whatever. People smiled. Uh, we interacted, you know, and it's a true part of this film. It's the other cast member, you know, an important cast member. It might be number one on the call sheet because it flavored how we worked here. It flavored how our, like every single thing about it, how I walked on the grounds, how I looked around, how I listened. It's a completely different experience. And, and I'm, you know, so glad that we were able to actually shoot here and, you know, not to inundate Pulse in Montana with production, but if, if people can get the opportunity to film in Pulse in Montana, it's a gift that we'll keep on giving and the rewards are bountiful. It was really for all of us. And again, it's the reason we all came back because this gave us something. It gave us a different kind of perspective on life. I know that sounds all very fruity and all that stuff, but it really is true. There's something about this wonderful place, Pulse in Montana, that um, is filled with a lot of love. Yeah, no, I get it. I'm a New Yorker, so I, um, uh -huh. I'm in New York right now. So I completely understand because anytime I go on vacation or I go somewhere like that, it's unexplainable. And it's the reason why so many ranchers and so many people are fighting to keep their land. And because, I mean, it's just, it's something that people, you can't explain it really. You did a really good job of trying to like you know like give the essence of it because it's so hard to explain because until you're standing there and you're looking at it you get this weird feeling like I don't know and like it's it's hard to explain and it's beautiful and that's why so many people are fighting for it and which is why I was so glad it took place in Montana to show this rancher and to show how the struggles and how hard and like what he's doing because it's difficult and so many people are fighting to keep it I wanted to know really quickly what it was like working with Graham and then what is your hope to like for for this film like I said there's so many layers of kind of less lessons to learn as you're watching this film, whether it's acceptance, whether it's being willing to accept help? Well, uh, first of all, you know, working with Graham was incredible. I've, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with some amazing actors, you know, and, and some of our amazing, um, you know, like Patrick Stewart. And I mean, just, you know, the, the, the list goes on and walking on set to, you know, first meet Graham McTavish, you know, all I could think of was like Outlander, you know, Game of Thrones, you know, The Witchery, you know, like everything kept coming. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I, I kind of geeked out. I did. I'm not going to lie. I geeked out a little bit. I think I might have stuttered and been like, uh, 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 you know, but, but he's super, he's so sweet. He's really lovely. He's a beautiful man. You know, he's a, he's a really beautiful gentleman from inside and out. He has amazing stories. He's willing to engage. You know, he's not standoffish at all. He's funny. He's self-deprecating. He's just a wonderful person, a really lovely man. And then to work with him, he's just, you know, man, he is, he's powerful and subtle, you know, within the same moment, he's strong and vulnerable within the same moment. You know, that's the kind of stuff that you want. I, my husband's an actor and we always talk about how you want to be surrounded by people who are better because it, it lifts you up and elevates you and you want to do better, right? And that's that's Graham McTavish. You know, you want to sort of, you know, get yourself inspired to do more and do better and be deeper and be more of a nuanced actor, you know, do a scene with Graham McTavish, it's a, uh, you know, check, you know, <laughs> that'll do it. And um, what uh, what do I want people to come away with on this film? I mean, it's such a beautiful, I don't want to give away a whole bunch, but I hope that people, first of all, I think when people come see this film, there's going to be so many different characters in it that you're going to kind of find yourself in someone. There's going to be sort of a relatable story in in there, uh, even just an aspect of somebody you, you'll find familiar to yourself, which I think is really important because it's important to see ourselves reflective in this world, especially through entertainment solely because it is a platform that can go out to so many. That's the real importance of art in general to connect us all so that we all know that we're here together on this lovely, you know, little planet. But one of the beautiful heart things about this film is sometimes you will find yourself in a place that is somewhat dark, but you have found comfort 
in that darkness and to understand that if you can release that darkness, the light will pour in, that there's always hope, that there's always love, and that love can reveal itself in many different ways. And to let yourself experience that, to let it in. I hope people just walk away going, you know, yesterday was beautiful, today is beautiful, and tomorrow can be beautiful. And next up is the one and only Graham McTavish, who plays John Alexander. This- this film is so good. It's so oh. beautiful. I love it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. So they were able to get you a um, copy to look at. Yes. I, I watched it. I actually watched it twice. It's one of the most beautiful films I think I've seen in a long time. Oh, uh, I agree. I agree. It's um, very timely. It's not the usual films that you get nowadays. It's a little bit of a kind of a return to a tradition of filmmaking that we don't really encourage so much now, which is very sort of simple, gentle, profound examinations of, you know, culture, respect, mutual respect, understanding, tolerance, uh, family, traditions, all these sort of things that are are really, um, I think, at risk nowadays, you know, those concepts. And um, I think it's it's very, very timely. It's, It's really the main reason that I did the film was that message, I think, that Brandon is sending out, really, particularly in the relationship between John and Fabienne that, you know, that two people who really do not occupy the same space at all in terms of their beliefs and cultures and the things that they enjoy, but can come to an understanding and a a respect for each other through knowing each other. Well, that's what I found so beautiful because you play John Alexander, who is a ranch owner who's upset Mm. because they want to come in and kind of film on his land. And Mm. land is so respected. I know so many ranchers are fighting to keep their land. So I completely understand Mm. the position he's put in. He kind of allows them begrudgingly to kind of do it. And in that process, kind of like you said, there's relationships that get formed where it wouldn't normally happen. You guys wouldn't normally cross paths the way that you guys do in this film. So what did that mean to you to kind of like play John and instill kind of a little bit of an old school kind of mentality, but then be able to meet people where your mind is still open minded and you're willing to listen and talk and not argue necessarily. I mean, I think, you know, I definitely occupy more of the space that John occupies in terms of my generation, my, you know, my upbringing, all of the things that help form us. And, you know, he reminds me very much of my father. The, in fact, the more the more I work in this business, the more roles that I find that remind me of him, <laughs> uh, which is strange. You know, there's a little bit of Dougal McKenzie uh, in my dad, there's a little bit of Dwalin, there's a lot of John Alexander in my dad, not so much Dijkstra in The Witcher, but, um, you know, I mean, similarly, you know, even the House of the House of the Dragon, the attitude of Sir Harold, very, very much like my father. But yeah, those traditions, I mean, they're old fashioned to put it mildly. They're they're often frowned upon. And you know, looked upon in a derogatory way that people who represent those values are sort of labeled as, you know, boomers and and all of, the, all of this sort of stuff, this sort of arbitrary label that you put on people based on when they were born. But, you know, I think for John, he gets to know Fabian and in through getting to know him, he becomes somebody that he cares about. And it doesn't mean that he likes necessarily what Fabian's doing, because I think one of the most telling lines in the film is at the very end when John has financed the film selling his own ranch and Fabian says to him well I, I thought you didn't like the film and, and straight away instantly John says I still don't and I think that's so interesting it, it would have been such an easy cop out for Brandon to go down the road of yeah you know I, I now understand you know what it is you're trying to say and I think it's really important that we have these discussions he doesn't think that at all what he cares about is the person Fabian. He cares about him. He's not so interested in the message of the film, which is his right. But what's crucial about John's attitude to all of these things is you are freely allowed to express your views and your values, and I will respect them in as much as I will listen to you, and I won't be derogatory about you because of what you you believe in, and I simply ask the same of you, and that's it. And it's such a simple message, really, Mm -hmm. but it seems to be such a difficult message for people today to really understand that we don't have to agree. We just have to be able to listen and, you know, like somebody for the strengths of their belief. 
And there, that's really, 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 really important because, um, you know, another version of this film could have been John becoming incredibly hostile towards Fabian, you know, rude, you know, just mocking him, you know, all the kind of tropes that those kind of stories can fall into, that there's no meeting between them at all in terms of who they are. But Brandon really did something, I think, very courageous in the writing of this and, and made them people, you know, people that were difficult for the the other person to understand but in the getting to know each other they did learn something about themselves as well something about human relationships that's very important yeah and i agree i think you know especially in these times which are kind of wild do you think that for unfortunately we've lost that somewhere along the way of having a conversation yeah. and being able to have a conversation like it's okay to not agree yeah. it's okay <laughs> to learn about someone else and this movie shows you not only in the one of the most beautiful landscapes yeah. ever but it, it all it shows you that people that could not be further from a similar background like you know like couldn't be further apart that it had like come together under very circumstances can mm. sit and talk and understand each other not necessarily agree with one another but understand mm. each other and respect one another again like you said it's so simple it's something that i think we need to see because it's something that i think a lot of people need to take a second and reflect and watch it and go oh maybe i shouldn't have reacted the way I did or maybe I should Absolutely. do that you know and, and, and that's what you guys kind of represent in this film. yeah and it's hard it's hard to listen sometimes it's easier to be in an echo chamber and just um, have your your views and your values and everything reinforced constantly by people who believe exactly the same as you you know another really important moment is you know when Bob really brings John to the point where he's giving away his wife's belongings something that he's been so resistant to and that he learns something through that that process I think it's a really Really pivotal moment in the film that that John shares those belongings with these people that he he barely knows actually in a really beautiful way that they they take something of him of his wife and in in the doing of that they bind together mm. forever those people and it, it's great I loved watching it I don't enjoy watching things that I'm in really it's always a bit of a painful process but I was able to put that to one side with this and, and really just enjoy the story you know the relationships between the, the people seeing the other performances in it uh, it was really great yeah how was it working you know I was speaking with Michelle right before mm. you and she said you know she she actually said she was a little nervous she was like you know he's an outlander he's in all these shows she said she was a little nervous meeting you she said you're the sweet nice funny deprecating guy and she said that you were you were just so fantastic with the accent and with really embodying this character so what was it like working on the opposite with Michelle oh it was great I mean honestly you know I don't say this lightly you know everybody that worked on that film everybody you know the people that catered the film the people the PAs you know the producers everybody it was a very very you know it's a, a bit of a cliche but it was a very family feeling environment we all worked together towards a common goal there was literally no ego on the set at all from anybody uh, it's so refreshing to be you know and I've been pretty lucky that way actually I would say that that's been overall my experience on most of the things that I've worked on that you know certainly Outlander was like that you know especially in those first two seasons the sense of um, everybody working together to make something as, as good as possible and it was the same with this we were uh, you know every Everyone was happy to be there. Everyone got on with it. Brandon was very open to suggestions. We listened to each other and we worked really hard. I mean, we accomplished a lot in four weeks. It was a lot of shooting. And, and it really goes to show, you know, that a, a low budget independent movie can really stand out and be and hold its head up high. I'm very proud of everybody's work on this. It's a beautiful film. I just found so much appreciation in the fact that there were <coughs> conversations that were able to be had or people being able to freely give their opinion without significant conflict. It was just nice to yes, see what yes. we had years ago, which was like communication and talking. And it, it was just a very nice set on one of the most beautiful backgrounds and, with yeah. a multi-layered movie yeah. where there's like a, a bunch of lessons to be learned by the time it's yeah. over. And it doesn't need to take away from people's passion about what right. they believe. You know, they don't need to sort of, you know, water it down and sort mm -hmm. of go, well, you know, I kind of believe in this you know maybe you right. don't it's you know it makes me happy no these people are very passionate John's very passionate about his way of life Fabian's very passionate about his film very passionate about what the film 
represents. John doesn't agree with a lot of what it represents. It's all good. It's all good. You know, I used to remember so many conversations in pubs in Scotland and England, you know, dinner parties where people would get heated, heated about stuff, you know, not abusive, but heated. And at the end of the evening, everyone parted with friends and everyone listened. Nobody walked off while somebody was talking and said, I'm not interested in your, it was very, um, very healthy. And how was it for you filming in Montana? And then of course, doing the accent, which by the way, if I didn't know you and I didn't see anything else you've ever done, I would have no idea that you were yeah. Scottish and you had an accent. What was that oh, like, you know, filming in Montana and then doing that accent? The accent, I've always been reasonably lucky with accents. I'm pretty good with them. I enjoy doing them. It's actually quite rare for me to use my natural accent in things. I would say The Witcher is probably the only thing recently that I can think of that I have used my natural voice. And in terms of Montana, I mean, well, what can I say? I love this place. I love it. It's the people. I mean, yes, the landscape is beautiful. I've got this amazing view that I'm looking at now over Flathead Lake. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's stunning. But it's the people that make this place. Everybody I encountered, every single person, the diner, the bar, going into, you know, coffee shops, anywhere you went, people were genuinely welcoming. They were interested in you. It's a beautiful way of living that they have here, which I think, and again, I think it's reflected in the film that uh, was much more common everywhere at one time. And I think we've lost touch with what they've been able to hold on to here, which is a really interconnected, respectful, helpful, cooperative uh, way of life. You know, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, they're all sort of living in communes. They're just really great neighbors and they're welcoming to people who don't come from here. I remember being in the diner and uh, I was there on my own and there were three proper cowboys sitting at the bar, older, older gentlemen. And this young guy came in and they knew immediately that he wasn't from around here. You know, they just very quietly started to say, you know, oh, you know, what brings you here? And he worked in the construction industry. He was a, a builder and he had heard that they needed builders out here. So he'd moved from Georgia and he'd come out and his family were going to join him. And they just had this very beautiful, simple exchange. You know, nothing, they weren't like crying into each other's lives or anything. But what came out of it at the end was this beautiful moment where this older man said to the young man, he said, well, well, young man, you're very welcome here. And I thought, that's such a beautiful thing to say. It's so sincerely meant, but very simple, you know? We recognize that you are bringing something to us that we need, and we respect you for that. And you will always be welcome here because of it. No, I'll never forget it. I, I just thought, wow, you know? Because, you know, you live in a very, very big city, and a lot of those exchanges are ignored. They just don't happen. People are too busy. They're not interested. They're shy, whatever it is. But yeah, it was great. So I love Montana. So you are in Montana for the premiere, so you guys are back. Yes. So what are you most yes. excited about tonight? Kind of like your baby, this thing that you worked so hard on. It's, that's such a beautiful film out to the world. So what are you most yeah. excited about? Especially, and what's also great is that it's premiering in Montana. So Well, the community are going to be there. And it is a film, you know, that's been helped to be made by the community. People invested in it. People helped out for nothing on it. And so this was a really huge joint community effort. And so it's completely appropriate that we're showing it for the first time here. No, I can't wait for people to see. You know, I toyed with the idea of, you know, going along dressed as a, you know, in the in the full cowboy gear. And I actually concluded that it would be wrong of me because it's OK for me to dress as John Alexander when I'm making a film. But I think it would have actually been disrespectful of me to sort of do a kind of cosplay cowboy turning up at the premiere. So I'm going dressed in a suit because that's me. I'm not going as a sort of fake sort of plastic cowboy where there's real cowboys. It would have been wrong. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. So I just want to tell you the movie is beautiful you're fantastic in it i loved it so congratulations i think Thank it's you. huge i can't wait to see it everywhere and then i just want to give you like a really quick second i know you have a book coming out you well, a little busy so you have a book yes. coming out yeah. which i'm super excited about and i know fans love you are returning to outlander again for this season so yes. you have house of dragon season two hopefully we'll see maybe mm -hmm. parts of you in that so just a little busy with some stuff so i just want to give you a quick second fans love you so if there's anything that you want to say to the fans 
plans or plug anything? Well, yeah, I'm very excited for people to see the second season of Men in Kilts on August the 11th. It starts. The book comes out November the 7th. So we're very excited about that. I think people will really like it. It's very interesting about New Zealand, about our experiences, about the history. The third season of The Witcher starts airing end of this month. And we start shooting season four later this year. So there's a lot happening. There's something else that's coming up that I'm going to be announcing, I think, probably either next week or the week after. I'm just waiting for you know things to be signed and all of that sort of stuff, but uh, which I'm very excited about. So I, I can't wait to let people know about that. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Graham and Michelle talk about what it was like filming somewhere in Montana. This was clearly a project of love. They spoke about how much they enjoyed being in Montana, what the people were like, and of course their premiere that they were having later that day. So it was so much fun hearing about the filming process and what it was like for the two of them. If you're interested in finding out more information, do a quick Google of somewhere in Montana to see if it's playing somewhere near you. Also stay tuned to Michelle and Graham's social media accounts where they will be updating you as to where the movie's playing and or where you'll be able to stream it in the future. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content.